Hey guys, in this video we would understand the reaction mechanism of multi-step reactions. First of all, what is a multi-step reaction? A reaction that does not take place in one step is a multi-step reaction. Let's take up an example. 2NO gaseous when reacts with 2 hydrogen gaseous gives nitrogen gaseous and 2 water molecule again in gaseous state. This reaction does not happen in one step. In fact, it takes place in three different steps. So the three steps in which this reaction happens are called three intermediate steps. The first step is where 2 nitrogen oxide gives dinitrogen dioxide. Second step is dinitrogen dioxide reacts with hydrogen to give dinitrogen oxide and water. Third step is where dinitrogen nitrogen oxide reacts with hydrogen to give nitrogen and water. Now what do these words mean? Fast, slow, fast. It means that this reaction happens very fast. Second step reaction is a slow reaction. So it takes time to finish up. Third reaction is also a fast reaction. Now why do we worry about the reaction being slow or fast? is because we are learning about reaction rates and rate is nothing but the speed in which the reaction takes place. So rate of reaction in simple language is called the speed of reaction. Now we have been talking about rates and we have been calculating rates. If we are given a reaction in different steps, always remember the rate law can be determined using the step that is the slowest one. Since step 2 is the slowest step, therefore step 2 is called the rate determining step. So if we need to write down the rate law using the intermediate steps of reaction, we do not need to do any calculations for all that stuff. We just have to write down the rate law as rate equal to K, which is the rate constant. The reactants that are involved in the slow step take their concentration, raised to the power their stoichiometric coefficients. That means raised to the power their balancing mole. So it has one, therefore the order of dinitrogen dioxide is one. Concentration of hydrogen raised to the power one as well because the balancing moles of hydrogen is also one. Let's study this potential energy diagram for the multi-step reaction. We know this is the potential energy axis. This is reaction progress axis. We see there are three peaks in this potential energy diagram and the reason we see three peaks means it has three steps in the reaction. Let's look at the steps again. Our first step is 2NO rearranges to form N2O2. This is a fast step. Fast step means the activation energy required to form this is a small number. We see 2NO rearranges to give N2O2. We have a small activation energy. Smaller the activation energy, faster is a step. Because the activation energy is small, that's why this is called a fast step. As the reactants contain 2NO plus 2H2, that comes from the original equation. That's this one, 2NO plus 2H2. And we see nothing has changed in the first step for 2H2, so we would write on 2H2 as is. This is called the intermediate step or this is called the intermediate form in the first step. Then the next step, which is the second step, you would notice that this has a very high activation energy compared to the rest of the two steps. This is also smaller activation energy. This is also small activation energy compared to this one. So the one that has the highest activation energy is the slow step. That's why step two is the slowest step. Now, how do we figure out what happens in step two? We go back to step 2 and we notice what happens. So we would see that in step 2 we have the reactant as N2O2 and we would have a reactant as hydrogen. Product is N2O and H2O. So definitely these two would be part of our products in step 2. N2O and H2O and N2O2 is definitely a reactant in step 2. N2O and H2O is a product. We notice in step 2 we just contain one H2 as a reactant. We do not contain any H2 as a product. But what we got from step 1 was N2O2 and 2H2. When we try balancing this equation, we would notice that we have N2O2 plus 2H2. That gives us N2O plus H2O. Two of the H's have already been covered up. We are still left with two more H. So that would be forming left out H2. Now what are these ACs called? These ACs are activated complexes. This is just a transition state that we see before a product is formed from reactant. And whenever a peak of activation energy is reached, we would always see an activated complex. This is the third step. After the third step, we should be able to see our products of the main reaction. And the products of main reaction is nitrogen and two water molecules. That's what we have here, nitrogen and two water molecules. So always remember, 
whenever we are making potential energy diagrams, the reactants and the products, they come from the original equation. These intermediates are written with the help of the steps of the multi-step reactions. And the maximum activation energy or the highest peak is always shown for the slowest step that is mentioned in the steps of the multi-step reaction. Let's go over this problem in order to understand it better. If the question says the reaction mechanism below has been proposed by a chemist working to convert chloroform to carbon tetrachloride. So the original reaction is to form carbon tetrachloride from chloroform. It happens in these three steps, step one, step two, step three. We notice here that we are not mentioning which one is the fast or the slow step. So that means that's what we would have to figure out in the question. Part A of the question wants us to write the overall equation for this reaction mechanism. How do we write that down? All we have to do is just add the left sides to left side and add right side to right side. So we have left side Cl2, Cl. CHCl3 plus Cl plus CCl3 gives us 2Cl plus HCl plus CCl3 plus CCl4. Now whatever is common we would cancel that out. CCl3, CCl3 gets cancelled out. We have 2Cls, 2Cl gets cancelled out and we are left with Cl2 from here plus CHCl3 from here giving us finally HCl plus CCl4. So this is our overall reaction. Next we have have to find out is there a catalyst in this reaction give reason for your answer always remember whenever a catalyst is involved in a reaction the catalyst is always mentioned over the arrow here here or here since we don't see anything written here so we just say that there is no catalyst involved because no inorganic elements are mentioned on the arrows. Next part, that is part C, identify any intermediates in this mechanism. Whatever gets cancelled out in your reaction in order to form the overall reaction, those are called the intermediates. So when we have to write on the intermediates, we would say 2Cl, that is what got cancelled out, and CCl3, carbon trichloride. These two are the intermediates of this reaction. Give a reason, we can just say the ones that get cancelled out in the reaction, they're called the intermediates. Next part is, the rate law for the overall reaction is rate equal to KCHCl3. Which step would likely be the rate determining step? We just learned that the rate determining step is the slowest step. If the rate law equation has CHCl3 concentration, we would go back and look into our steps and see where is CHCl3 present as a reactant. We notice that CHCl3 is present as a reactant in step number 2 and none of the other steps contain CHCl3. So this is going to be the slowest step or this is going to be the rate determining step. Now we would notice that the second step also has Cl as a reactant. So if the rate law does not contain Cl and the reason we do not have Cl in there is because the Cl is an intermediate and Cl gets cancelled out in the reaction. Any reactant that participates in the rate determining step should not be an intermediate. It should be part of the main reaction. So which one is the rate determining step? We would say step 2 is the rate determining step because it is the slowest step. Let's take up another problem to understand it more. And the question here is, examine the potential energy diagram below and answer the following question. It says, which letter or letters represents an activated complex? We know activated complex are always formed at the peak. So B, D, and F represents activated complexes. Part B is, what is activation energy reversible for step 2? We know this is step 1. This would be step 2, this would be step 3. Now we want to find out what is Ea reversible for step 2. So since yellow is the step 2, reversible means we're coming back from E to C. So that would be E to D. E to D is Ea reversible for step 2. And how do we figure that out? All we have to do is just read the values here. So this is approximately 70. When we read this, this is approximately 30 or we can say 28. So the difference between 70 and 28 is 42. The unit here is kilojoule. So you would write down 42 kilojoules. Next is which letter or letters represent a reaction intermediate? To find out the reaction intermediates, we know reaction intermediates are definitely something that are formed from the activated complexes but not the last one because this is going to be the products and this is the reactants. So for part C answer is C and E. Next part is what is activation energy forward for step 
3. So we know the pink step is step 3. They want us to find out activation energy forward. So activation energy forward is from E to F. This hole is the activation energy forward. To find this value, let's read this first. This is 90 and this value here is a 25. Then we do 90 minus 25. We get 65 and the unit is kilojoules. Next part is part E. What is delta H forward for the endothermic step? How do we know which one is the endothermic or which one is the exothermic step? So we notice that here, step 1, product of step 1 is C, although it's the intermediate, but it's for step 1, it's the product. And the level of the step 1 product is lower than the level of the step 1 reactant. So this is an exothermic step. When we look at the step 2 of the reaction, we see step 2 is the yellow step. And in the yellow step, C forms E. E is higher than C. That means this is an endothermic step. Similarly, step 3, which is the pink step, G is higher than E. So this is also endothermic step. So we have two endothermic steps. One is the pink step and one is the yellow step. We have to find out delta H forward for the endothermic step. So delta H is the difference between the reactant energy and the product energy for that particular step. And the value lies here. So if this is 30 or whatever number you've taken it previously, if you've taken this at 28 and this is 10, so 28 minus 10 is 18 kilojoules. Therefore, delta H forward for step 2 is 18 kilojoules. Now let's find out delta H forward for step 3. This value is at 25. Let's read where this is. When we extend this, this is approximately, we can say 38. So delta H forward for step 3 is 38 minus 25, and that is 13 kilojoules. Next part is to find out delta H forward for the overall reaction. Now delta H forward for overall reaction would be between the initial reactant, the main reactant, and the main product. Main reactant is at a level of 15. So this value is 15 and the main product is this and the potential energy level we have taken it as it's 35. So for part F, delta H forward would be equal to 35 minus 15 which is 20 kilojoules. And this is how we solve problems whenever we are given potential energy diagrams.